What's happening in Myanmar is, of course, a very serious human rights crisis. More than 500 people have been killed, unarmed demonstrators, bystanders, medical first responders, children in their homes. And so we do really have this uh, very serious situation where the Myanmar military shows no signs of backing down. In fact, it is ratcheting up uh, its level of violence using rocket propelled grenades, hand grenades against unarmed demonstrators in the last couple of days. But at the same time, the demonstrators, the strikers across the country, the vast majority of the population have also shown that they are determined not to give up either. But the situation is much more serious than just a human rights crisis. It is also uh, a risk that Myanmar will fall into state collapse. What does that mean? It means that at the moment, of course, economic activity has come to a halt. Uh, markets are starting to become dysfunctional. Availability of food is decreasing and people's ability to buy food uh, is decreasing because of the economic crisis. So we have a human rights crisis. We have an economic crisis. We have a security crisis and we could soon also have a displacement crisis. So we have a we have a, a multi-pronged humanitarian emergency and, and this will not uh, go away anytime soon. One of the greatest challenges with addressing uh, the situation in Myanmar is that the regime is showing no interest in dialogue, in negotiation, in compromise, and by its very actions of unleashing horrendous force against unarmed protesters, it is making almost impossible the idea that in the future, the population of the country could accept that this regime has any role, that the Myanmar military has any role in governing the country. So the regime itself is, is cutting off avenues uh, where it could get out of this crisis uh, if it wanted to. In addition to having almost the entire population of the country against it, Myanmar also faces an extremely difficult international environment. Uh, ASEAN risks having a failed state in the heart of its regional bloc. Even uh, the superpower next door, China, which has always been uh, a backer uh, of different successive regimes and governments in Myanmar, has expressed unhappiness with the situation. It's clearly not uh, not happy with the coup, with the fact that uh, its economic interests have been uh, jeopardized by this, by this action by the military. Almost every country has spoken out against the coup and against the violence. Myanmar has very few friends. And so that means that there is, unlike uh, in some other situations around the world, a convergence of interests, or at least an overlapping of interests between regional powers and Western powers. And it's incredibly important to make use of that overlapping interest because that's far more powerful uh, than any split between East and West, which would, uh, which would uh, really not help uh, to move the situation forward. The sad reality is that at the moment, the regime appears determined to remain in power, to try and consolidate its power at all costs, using whatever violence is necessary. It does not appear that it has any interest in dialogue, in compromise, in negotiation. Um, and that means that a mediated solution, which some in the region have been calling for, uh, does not appear to be on the table at this point. <laughs>